before we um, attach the cloak to the figure, we have to make sure that we paint the inside of the cloak because we can simply not reach that uh, once it's attached. And um, I've also just put some dark bone color on the inside of the on the inside of the skull thingy here. So uh, I don't have to work around the beautiful painted mask on the, right. on the face. Um, <coughs> for this part of the cloak, we will uh, go same as the original box art from Games Workshop. So black. I think that's a very nice contrast with the um, with the red from the armor. So um, we will just use plenty of black and. Just add a tiny bit of white. And a bit of dark sea blue, but not too much. Um, if you have problems blend, uh, blending black, it's quite good to start with not black, but just very, very dark gray. Because you will always see the difference between the pure black and if you just add a tiny bit of white, you will always see that step in there. Right. So starting with the dark gray helps. And because when you, you can't shade pure black. Yeah, it's, right, so. it's possible, but it's kind of a hard job and you can just uh, skip that with a dark gray. Yeah, I think the... Um, the, the recipe that, that Games Workshop give for the, their black is is black with like a tiny tip of blue in, mm -hmm. um, and uh, then then they you dark line or go into the shadows with with pure black. Yeah. Because black is is one of those colors that can give people quite a bit of trouble with. Um, not, not not so much in the sense of uh, coverage because covering wise black is, yeah. is like the best, but it's um, it's it's what you paint onto it that, that can be quite tricky. So uh, generous layer of the dark gray, um, we let that dry, and after that we will work wrinkle by wrinkle um, to get a nice a nice blending on there. Uh, a guy on Facebook, one of our supporters, uh, Severino, asked me actually how I do blendings on areas like that because it's kind of hard if you want to tackle it just with wet blending. Um, so it's a combination of wet blending and glazes. And not blending over the whole surface also helps because you can, you just have a limited time you have to work with the pigments before they start drying too much. So going wrinkle by wrinkle is a lot easier than trying to blend the whole thing. So yeah, here there are some spots of uh, foundation still shining through. See that also down here? Yep. You can see that also in the gloss difference. Mm -hmm. So just make sure everything has like, an even cover. Something I picked up from a, a, um, a workshop was that uh, if, you, if you worked the paint too much, you can actually end up getting a glossy effect. Yeah, with with the paint, and it's it's really weird because of something to do with the way that the the pigment settles, um, and that the way to fix that is just to take like a really super thin glaze and just paint a very careful layer over the top. Yeah, and that should should mat it back down slightly. So as I don't want the cape to end up looking like like a non metal cape, um, I'm. Not going for a a straight white for the highlight, but a light gray. So the maximum highlight will be not not white. Right. And I have to mix that here in the in the back of the palette, um, just so it stays the same for the whole cloak. I have to mix a larger amount actually of paint, so I'm and, sure. And this is where uh, having something like a wet palette can help. Yeah. It can really help in, in cases like this. It's not it's not that necessarily to say one is better than the other, but in a circumstance like this, it's, it's a good tool to have. Yeah. So I'll put, put some uh, thinner base color on 
uh, one wrinkle. We will start here with that one, because it's most prominent. Mm -hmm. And you can see on my thumb, it's a lot thinner than before. So I'm putting that actually only on one half of the, um, one half of the wrinkle, taking some highlight color, and placing that here. Wow. You see, actually, you have quite some seconds to blend the two into each other. And then I'll let that dry and see how the result is. Right. I mean, even even that, that's just like the first stage, but you, you can already see that it's 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 like that small transition and just with a couple of glazes even, you could probably smooth that down yeah. and have something looking good, good for the table. So um, we would just continue, as you said, with the, the glaze with the medium tone. We'll place that here. Actually see how it just how it dries. I love that effect. Like when you're sitting there painting and it just kind of... Oh wow, the difference is really immediate. And Ben really is just a regular human being. He doesn't have magic <laughs> breath that somehow you breathe on it and it just it, it, it does something special to me. <laughs> So yeah, you see it was a combination of a wet and wet blending and a few, very few glazes and that is already a very nice transition at least to one side and now we will um, tackle the next side with again some base color here in the edge of the, the recess of the wrinkle, then go for some highlight color. Already quite nice, but uh, again, I place with a medium tone. Should soft things out in it. What what tone was that that you just that you uh, a little bit lighter than the the medium tone? So oh, in, in between the mid and the highlight. Yeah. And that's and again, I suppose that that's coming back to the why you have the transitions on the palette that you can just pick the little spots that you need to smooth out the areas. Yeah. Actually, we won't see the upper part here because that will be covered, so it's not so important that we the transitions all the same. Mm -hmm. But again, again, another great spot to practice. Yeah. before turning it around and, and going on to the, the more prominent side. Then just some, some of that highlight color here for picking out little edges. We'll also, because uh, the back side, you will see that later, is uh, I just did some scratches and drilled in there a little bit with the, with the Dremel. And uh, I did that just to give it a bit more worn look, not as it would be just directly out of the Chaos Factory. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as I didn't reach the inside quite that good, we will just go ahead with the highlight color and pick out some little dots or things that are not perfect in the blending and do it as uh, like small damages on, on the material. Mm -hmm. Now, is the, um, 
is the Chaos Factory here in Berlin? Is that is that something we can visit whilst I'm over here? <laughs> no, it's uh, it's in the UK. Oh. Well, if, if if you ever come over, I'd be happy that, that we went and visited. <laughs> the Chaos Factory. <laughs> <laughs> I hear the tour is is, is a killer. Um. <laughs> so on to the next wrinkle, and we will just repeat the the same technique. You, I mean, you're you're. Slayer Sword winner, multiple awards. Um, but but to someone maybe that that doesn't that isn't at that far along, would would you maybe recommend that before you started painting something like this, you actually took a photograph of the cloak from a very specific angle, so you could have that photograph and then you can see where the light falls because it might, especially on a black surface with the reflection of the light, it could often be slightly confusing when you're when you're turning the the cloak. Yeah, especially when you have multiple light sources like we have here in the studio or at mm-hmm. home when you work with two desk lamps or uh, strong daylight from the window or something mm-hmm. like that. Uh, it's quite helpful to actually have a reference pic of the uh, the model in a like in a in a primed way. Mm-hmm. Uh, also black and white foundation helps for that if you, you want to get a good impression of the light and work from there. Uh, here I just decided to not go for a black and white foundation because um, sometimes the uh, the grain is a little bit too strong and if you want to work like very uh, smooth on especially on non-metal parts it's really nice to start with a black foundation. Would you say Chad um, from from looking at people's work online it was like very fashionable like say for the last four or five years for people to be doing xenophil lighting and then now it's actually sort of I've seen a lot of people just going straight from black. Yeah, I think the 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 thing is, the black and white foundation and the the zenith light that you you create with that uh, is quite a good help. Actually, quite a good reminder of where you want to put the light. With some practice, you can just easily go back to to black and still have that all that light in mind that you've painted for several figures. So mm-hmm. You're like, ah, oh, okay, sure, this this must be light because it's on the top. And, you kind of that gets very natural for you. So you, if you yeah. switch back to black, you still have that zenith to light idea in your mind. Right. And that's I mean that and essentially that's that's the principle that you did for the for the armor, right? But yeah. just with you 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 place the white with a brush as opposed to to letting letting a white spray hit it. actually quite a quite a good step and quite an interesting step of how to hide your blending mistakes <laughs> just <laughs> exaggerating them and highlighting them and making them look as if you would have painted them intentionally well we can ask Michael to edit out that you said that this is all deliberate <laughs> it's, it's all part of the plan <laughs> Sure, sure. The plan. But it, I, th- I think that's that's actually a really good point because the those tiny imperfections they're they're, they're almost slightly random. And I was actually gonna, just about to say that, that with something like that, less is more when you're putting the those little imperfections on there. Yeah, plus it will make the material or the miniature look not as plastic-like as it is. You know, because all these little things just indicate some texture going on. And your eye can hardly make the, the difference between the, the painted on small details and the those that are actually in the sculpt. So I just place the dark color. And now with a clean brush. I will feather out the feathers here. Now we're rinsing the brush again. And even less pigmenting here. And it's important sometimes if you do the, the feathering that you pull out the color 
over a larger area, like over this whole wrinkle, mm -hmm. because you don't want any of the borders to be visible. So you have to make sure that you really work with zero pigments in here. Okay, we'll let that dry. See, it's uh, just flawless. Less. And the top as well. I think I'd also like to take a moment to say thank you to Ben for introducing a hairdryer into this uh, pretty much airtight room in a baking hot day in Berlin. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really made my day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's my pleasure. So, yeah, it's, it's getting warmer again today, so... If paint dries faster than yesterday, you will say, okay, it's magic happening here. But it's like we were saying, wherever you paint, there's there's different different countries, different humidities, different heats. I mean, if you're painting somewhere that's, you know, somewhere that's really, really hot, you, you probably are going to need um, like something that, that stops the drying process. Yeah. <clears throat> um. Actually, it started all with a with, with a little joke between us uh, that you said we need a, a massive freehand inside. Uh, <laughs> so I think it's a nice idea, and we're uh, but we're not going for a massive freehand. But it's kind of nice, and we want to take advantage of the uh, the thing that we didn't assemble the model totally. So painting a freehand in here with the fully assembled model is nearly impossible. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, we now we have quite quite a good, uh, actually free way to work with the brush. Um, we will go for a simple golden line in there, and uh, I switched the brush. And now I'm working with the um, with the Da Vinci with the ten zero. <laughs> uh, oh wow! Yeah, it's not really a ten zero, but it's uh, they they have like a, a different size to them. But yeah, it's a very fine brush to to make fine line work. So I have to find a good angle to to pull my brush. I found myself not breathing there. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, make it a bit thicker than you can actually paint it because uh, you want to highlight it and therefore you need, uh, need it to be not really twice as, uh, as big, but somewhat, somewhat thicker than you can paint with a brush. I see a lot online people asking um, tips on how to paint um, with very like painting very straight lines, and uh, so some uh, a, a reoccurring a bit of feedback is people will say to to breathe in and then hold your breath as you do the line, and just breathing out very slowly as you do it. That can sometimes help steady steady your hand. Is that something you do? Yeah, I am. Um, <laughs> this is I, like, <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Actually, I think uh, when you when you are very focused on painting, um, little details you automatically actually stop to breathe. You, you, yeah, you, you do it naturally. What's the um? What's what's the the? I mean, not not exactly, but what's the the thickness of the paint that you're using right now to, um, to do that? It's thick because I don't want actually to. I uh, have to go back to to a, to the line and right having to do that in yeah, like four layers would yeah, just yeah, kind, would of, kind of drive you insane. Yeah, definitely. And at, at at that size, something so small, you know, you you really wouldn't notice the difference between doing it in one thicker layer and doing it in like four or five thinner layers. Yeah, and even if you built up a bit of uh, a bit of uh, volume. With the thickness of the paint, it's not a problem because it should resemble, like some like a stitched on so, line. Yeah, I mean not not so much like like uh, Bohan's three D uh, <laughs> art. But, yeah. I mean I mean that that's <clears throat> like wow. Um.
and you're using the same tone as the the gold that you've used for the for the the non-metallic metal gold. Yeah. Or not. yeah. We were talking about uh, how you load the brush when you were using the side one, the size one, and about how not to to completely flood it with paint. Mm -hmm. But I've noticed here with the with the smaller brush, it's like that there is on there, and that's something that I've I've noticed through through painting at home. It's pretty difficult. You you couldn't really hold that much paint on a brush that size. Yeah. Otherwise, you'd just be doing tiny little little dashes the whole way along. I mean, you, you really you do have to load it that way. Yeah, true. I never thought about it, but yeah, I guess that's why it's full full of paint right now. You can see it's uh. Till the till the very top, mm -hmm. but yeah, and I think it's worth worth mentioning as well that with with something like this, it will take a little bit of practice. Don't don't try it once, get and frustrated <laughs> and just think, <laughs> oh, I, I'm never going to do this again. I can't do it. It's it, Ben's been doing this for many many years, and it's something that just comes. It's like comes naturally to him now. Yeah, and just try to to work. Start with a simple simple. Uh, Motive. <laughs> yeah, don't don't, don't, don't look don't, at Kirill stuff and think yeah. you could do that on the in the first year. Don't look. Don't think I'm going to try and put a, a section of the Sistine Chapel on the back <laughs> yeah. of this thing and then. Oh, no, I can't do it. Right. So I think one important thing is that you also hide uh, highlight these uh, these borders according to the highlights that highlights that you've painted on the uh, on the black. Mm -hmm. So just sorry, just quickly because we might miss that you 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 still have the transitions on the palette from the non-metallic metal, and you're just taking steps from that. Yeah. Yeah. But again, uh, in in well, painting a detail like that, we won't re really try to do a wet blending or a loaded brush. It's more classical layers. Uh huh. And it, actually, interestingly, you're you're still doing each. Highlight section by section. So yeah, I, I wonder why <laughs> you could actually do it in the, in, the, in one go. But right, okay, no, so I just saw that. I was like, okay, he's 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 doing it section by section. I wonder if there's a reason for that. Just the, the just there actually before you you were you were pulling down the paint but lifting your brush off ever so slightly as you got further away. Is is that true to say? Yeah, I try to uh, to create a like a very thin line. It's actually hard for the camera to pick up, but uh, here is a very thin, lighter line on yeah. top. So I tried to create that with uh, just reducing the pressure of the. Because um, if I mean at this point with the camera like right on it, you you can see me, but but like from from say a meter away when you're looking at it, it just looks like dude, it's perfect. Yeah. Actually, seeing lines is also not a, not a problem if the if your highlight is just in the right spot. I think even even if if you draw like a white line across the the thing, if it's just on the perfect spot, it's n not a problem to actually see lines. It's mm -hmm. uh, you can also see that with uh, some of Kirill's work. It's just, it's perfect. You look at it and go like crazy. Then you look zoom in kind of with your you. <laughs> Uh, crawl into the miniature and you're like, man, I can see all the lines, but it's still just perfect because it's just like a reflection of, of light. And if you look at uh, re reflection in real life, it's often that it's actually um, just shapes with one color and you don't have smooth transitions all over the place. Yeah. It's like we were saying before, when, when you start to, to learn these... these um theories, you, you see objects in everyday life totally differently. Um, you were mentioning like the, like a chrome tap and about how when you do like, you look yeah. at it, it's like, oh, that's how they like, when you move your head and it's just somewhere else. And it's, yeah. And the advantage of something like black, right, is if that happens, it, it's like the second you can cover it. Yeah. And plus we still have the our transition, um, where we can actually pick even if we go overboard there. OK, 
Okay, and a, um, another step because uh, the, the, the clock will be like, like that, so we don't need a lot of shading there. Um, but another thing to give the, the whole clock and free end a little bit more uh, depth is a glaze of tank brown. Mm -hmm. Now, the nice thing is it will tie the two pieces together as well. So it's what we were talking about earlier, the same color and the shadows mm -hmm. for different materials. Flexing it and feathering it out a bit with the brush. So again, just placing it here in the shadows. the brush and feathering it out a little to the sides. That's very cool. Wow, we want to try this right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird because you'd like like Actually, sitting here and, and speaking with you, watching is like normally I'd be sitting here watching. It's like, oh, I, get, oh, I might try that now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> grab something and, and start painting. Yeah, that's that's really the that's why it's the hot seat because you sit there and go like, ah, no, I have to paint. I have to go <laughs> home. So when I sit here, uh, I was filming with Matt. It was the same. Like, oh, no, no, no. What is he doing? I have to do it at home. No, I have to I have to do the same. I want to paint. But yeah, you. Are on the question side of the game. <laughs> well, it's 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 really um, so, something so simple that step is again with the glazes. It just makes that difference. Yeah, and also the I think the effect on the black is really nice mm. because it, it gives quite a bit of uh, interest to that area. Um, I think this stage um, we're ready to to glue things in place. Um, because we in the studio we we have a, a bit of a time pressure here. Um, uh, I think I would, if I would do it at home, I would just fill it with milliput and let it dry for like two or three hours. Um, I know sometimes you guys out there well, while painting your figures, you don't have time because you want to finish an army or um, just finish something for a competition. So a nice and easy thing is to use PVA glue for that uh, to cover the gaps with that. So we will first um, glue the figure uh, and then once the glue is cured, we will be back and show you how to cover the seam line with PVA. Wow. Yeah, you can see I've already uh, tried to fill the, uh, the this gap here on that side just to see how it actually works on, on top. Mm -hmm. um, you can see in the very deep recess here, it's still white, but uh, that is because it's not cured 100% yet. Um, we're using an express um, PVA glue that should um, dry, I think, in five to ten minutes. Some might take longer, so um, yeah, better go for the express one. Just applied a little bit here on the wood cube. And I'm just applying it with the brush. It's worth mentioning at this point that, that Ben would do this differently if if there was more time. Yeah. Um, but but as we were saying off camera that um, this can this can actually be a good technique to show people because some people don't have much time to do stuff and this is a great way to, to, to get get the job done quickly and, and in a in a satisfactory way. So you see, due to the high surface tension, already that deep cut in there is filled. The nice thing about this side here is uh, because it's like the middle line of the skull um, that does not have to be like 100% flat. You don't just want it to be right uh, covered so it looks like it's one part. So I'm just using a bit thin down PVA here to the side to not have any hard borders. Mm -hmm. You're almost bordering into loaded brass tape with <laughs> PVA here. Um, it's worth mentioning as well. Don't don't use like your favorite brush to do this. 
Yeah. Um, we, we were actually just saying, mate, if, if you're painting with a friend, try try and grab your friend's brush. Don't <laughs> don't use yours. Yeah, you have to make sure that you really rinse the brush. Good, maybe even with uh, with some brush soap. this on the top dry see this here might it's quite okay but it might need a second go is that due to the the nature of the glue because it, it shrinks yeah as, as it dries I like this this is a really cool tip this is something I never would have thought of doing yeah I think a lot of uh, of showcase pinches go like, what the fuck is yeah, he doing? Probably, yeah, that's probably, probably yeah, yeah. Um, but but still, it it works. You know, yeah. I mean, it's it's there's a it's a problem that needs solving, and the problem has been solved. It's it's I like it. It's good. So um, we let that dry for uh, twenty minutes, and um, maybe we need to come back and apply a second layer. But I think you got the point about how we uh, can close gaps like mm -hmm. that, and yeah, we'll be back uh, with. The um, outer part of the cloak, I think, already painted because it's uh, it's also just the very same as the inside. We we'll just do the upper part here with the nice uh, little embroidered uh, frame here with the chaos symbol, and the upper part here. And the upper the upper part of the 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 cloth the cloth. Which color were you going for the? Top? Um, I think I will. Um, not introduce like a, a strong new color, so I will go for a um, for a um, dark sea blue <laughs> uh, with a tiny bit of the red in some of the lower shadows. Maybe it's, uh, doing that with the tank brown mm -hmm. and also tie things together. Just a bit more blue than than the um, the black on the cape. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, actually, of uh, of the conversations we've been having off camera. I think this is the longest one that we've we've held to maintain. <laughs> yeah. I think we should go and grab Michael and <laughs> yeah. what color to no, do, do that too. Have a look at the book again. Yeah, because I think that this black here is quite obvious, but I guess sometimes you just have to think. Okay, it's just another layer of, uh, of of cloth. You want to have it in a different color to make it uh, to give it a nice separation between the two here mm -hmm. and. Yeah, that's just one of these details and I'm like okay because in the front that part is not really that important but right. if I turn the model around it's quite an important part yeah. of, of the figure and at least for me often it's like that you just imagine the figure first from like the money shot you you see like that right. angle of the finger like oh yeah well this will be that color this will be that color and you don't necessarily think about the colors on the back and right like ah, okay and th that's I think another point where we uh, actually, spend some time discussing that. And it's it's not when you when you're looking holding it, the figure, taking a look at it. Some, I suppose sometimes naturally you just you always hold it up and you hold it in the same spot. So yeah. to so to hold it up and then to actually make sure you give it a turn around and look at every other angle because uh, when someone sees that miniature, they're not going to see it in the same way that you've that you've interpreted yeah. it. If you have like a a, a diorama or something like that, it's a bit different because you you have quite a clear front of the display so people are yeah. like, okay that's that's the main view yeah but, uh, with figures especially when you turn them around in your hand yeah it's a different story all right so um yeah we'll be back uh, for the upper part of uh, the cloak and the details here in the next chapter awesome all right so you can see i've uh, done the very same to the back of the cape um so i've done on the inside um, I also did some of these parts, the non-metal part also here, uh, non-metal and some like teeth in there, also the chain mail because it's quite the same as in the in the middle. Um, the handcuffs here in uh, steel, I initially thought of making those gold, um, but Jack suggested, well they are they're, they're handcuffs and I was like, Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> you're right. So, okay, handcuffs should be uh, rather steel. So uh, I also painted those um, using the very same tones than uh, for the blade, and I just left this part here still in the uh, black foundation, 
Uh, that is one of the parts that is uh, still going to be red in the end. Also the corn symbol up there. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to show you here um, how to actually put the nice, slightly more rounded highlight here on the on the Brilliant. this part, because I think that is something that might be interesting for a lot of people. Oh yes. So again, uh, we will. Again, we will um, just put the base color, which was black on the surface. some uh, white to the tip of the brush and we want the main highlight to be somewhere here and I try to just move the brush in a like a half moon shape to get that here more rounded. And pretty similar to um, to the highlight on the on the knee. We will just uh, bring up this side here a bit. So you're gonna have that contrast in here, the very dark spot to the light one on that side. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm starting to, to, to get the feeling it's, it's a real massive part that, to, to have a, a basic knowledge of how the, the light works and, uh, and how it hits different surfaces. Yeah. I think really um, just thinking about light uh, already helps you to, to improve it because usually, yeah, you know, coming from a uh, tabletop where most of us started, mm -hmm. it's just like you paint stuff that is deep in the model, you paint that dark, and the rest areas you paint them light. Yes. So just having in mind that you paint actually things according to your light zones yes. is, is a huge thing. Also some scratches here. Remember, we need quite a bit of contrast here um, because we will glaze over it again. And actually, we were talking in the office um, earlier, Ben, about your shield maiden. And I mentioned how much I loved the, the, the coat, her, her top. Mm -hmm. um, and you were saying that essentially it's, it's, it's really the same sort of technique. You, you, you have like, I mean, you, you did with the, the zenithal lighting and then really just used those spots of white for the, for the texture and then yeah. just worked with some glazes mm -hmm. to, to get the color. So really so, something like this can, can this, the technique can be used for a variety of other things. Definitely. I think you could almost um, paint every material like that. So, uh, so working with the, just working with gray scale colors to get some nice texture. You could also use a sponge, for example, to create strong texture right. and paint in some uh, more controlled dots and scratches, for example, mm -hmm. and then color it with glazes. Speaking of which, let's get some red into our game. Again, it's a mixture of the Mephiston red and a bit of black. Okay, let that dry. It's something that, that it, it, it's almost so simple, but it gives such a such a lovely effect. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. I, I really love the moment the first glaze is uh, on spot and dries away. Yeah. And you, like you have that. Uh, now the same highlights, but in a totally different color. But you can really also play a little with the saturation that you have in the the color that you glaze over it. So more layers will turn out stronger and uh, also in saturation if mm -hmm. you said the pure red. Now I've been looking through the, some of your, your previous works 
Um, and I noticed there was a, there was a, a very distinct lack of red going through them. I wondered if 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 that was a specific reason for that. Or... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Actually, usually I think I tend to not use like a lot of extreme colors, like like red, green, blue, all together on one model. Um, and red is such a strong color mm -hmm. that uh, you need quite a lot of work to actually make it work in a, in a bigger context of, of a diorama or miniature because that just draws a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, I kind of avoided... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I think I kind of avoided that... Uh, uh, because uh, oh, that's a flashy kind of uh, painting I always try to, to, to avoid. It's like, uh, for example, I love the paint job from uh, Kirill from Yellow One on his Aurora Space Marines. Oh, they, we they, were just looking at those. Yeah, yeah we were just beautiful. looking at those. But, uh, that green really makes my eyes hurt. Oh, it's really? Like, I, do you know what? I, I thought that was, I was like, wow, that's beautiful. I love that. It's the same for me. I love it, but I think if I would have to paint... Like a, a whole army with them, or, yeah, or, might try or even like nuts. even like one model. I think it would just ever so slightly hurt my eye. <laughs> so so there on that that front armor plate, it's like you you've you've sketched in the lights. You've done that first glaze all over with the red, mm -hmm. and then you're just building up a certain spot of saturation of that red. Yeah, I'm doing okay. the same right here now. Also trying to get this edge here, not really highlighted with white, but uh, just with a little bit more saturation to make it appear stronger or catching more light. And a little bit of black here, just on that lower edge. And a tiny bit of red and white for just that part here in the middle. That little spot of reflection. Yeah. You have to be careful to not build up too much red, otherwise you lose a lot of the work that you've done before uh, with the black and white. Mm -hmm. But yeah, right now I think that is really nice also with these little lights up there. It's, uh, Really nice because you have the all these little lights just following up to to the face here. That's that, that's actually a really interesting point. It's it's you're you're thinning your paints not just so you don't obscure detail, but it's to really make sure that that you're using the full effect of that the translucency yeah. of acrylic paint with you know for for these miniatures. So yeah, I would I think I can continue with that upper part here with the red inside uh, of cam already done the the back. It's just the very same, so uh, we'll try not to hit with our light color all the way into the recesses and then just glaze over it. Mm -hmm. uh, I will bring up the light here in the upper part to have that darker to give it a nice contrast with the um, skull that is around the other skull. <laughs> skull on skull. <laughs> Skullception. So yeah, we will have all that bone so parts coming and... Um, yeah, let me just uh, finish actually the, the whole symbol of cam because it's just a repetition. Um, I will come back and explain where I place the lights and stuff, but actually it's the very same like that gold. It will gold and no big news there. All right, so um, we'll see you once that is part uh, painted and we'll be ready for the bones. You can see actually the, the PVA dried quite well in there. Mm, it's very nice. 
and yeah even even here on that side it works really well and that was just like a, a 10 minute I, I was about to say yeah i mean it, you, you said off camera it's it's not absolutely perfect yeah but for, for what it is that that's i think that's really good and it's something that's really useful if, if you just need to, to fill something very quickly yeah. something something small that you may not necessarily want to to cut off a larger piece of your green stuff, a larger of your middle. Yeah, make or, or just, just if it's like very fine and you have are actually afraid to smear everything with the milliput. Yeah, then it's just good to take just a tiny bit of PVA glue on the brush. Uh, if I would go uh, for a gold demon entry, I might not do that on no. a visible area like that. But uh, it's quite a nice little trick. All right, so um, yeah, let me just quickly pull that off cam and. We'll be back for the bonus. Thank you.